here it is, the tone video. I'm finally going to break down all of the secrets of how I create my sound. They're not really that big of secrets. If you've dug through the comments on my YouTube videos or on Instagram, I answer people's questions pretty regularly about how I record, the effects that I use, and all that stuff. But in this video, I will consolidate everything, and we're going to go take a look at every single component, piece by piece, of how I create my sound. But first, I have some super exciting news to share, and that is that my Patreon is live. So please, check the link in this description and go take a look at my Patreon. So here's a bit about how it works. Every single month, I'm going to be posting two guitar lessons that will be available for patrons. Six bucks a month will get you one of these videos. They're each going to be like 10 to 15 minutes long, and they're going to cover a wide range of topics from theory to technique, all this cool stuff. Ten bucks a month gets you two videos. So right now, as we speak, there are already two guitar lessons waiting for you to sign up and get access to them. So there's one video about how to play more dynamically, how to make your playing more expressive, and then there's another video about how to play spread triads, or the one five three chord voicing that I am super fond of. And in just a couple of days, there's going to be two more videos, one about the cage system of how we can connect chord shapes all over the neck, and one about some super cool chord inversions. So in a couple days, there's going to be four guitar lessons up and available to you if you want to become a patron. $6 gets you one video a month. $10 gets you two videos a month. Please, please, please go check out the link in the description and visit my Patreon. I would be super happy to see some of you over there. Okay, let's get to the tone. How do I do it? So, the I'm going to go piece by piece, starting with the guitar. Then I'm going to talk about the gear. Then I'm going to talk about the software. So, first things first. This is a Gibson SG Faded Special that I modded. I took the stock pickups out and I put in these two guys. This is, an, this is Gibson's Angus Young Signature Humbucker. The whole reason I got the SG in the first place is because I wanted to play like Angus. I was a huge ACDC fan when I was younger. So I totally, that's why I have this guitar. These days, I basically never use this pickup. I only use this guy. This is a Seymour Duncan Hot P90. It's a great pickup, and virtually every single video I have ever posted on the internet uses this guy. It's just the tone that I like these days. This humbucker is great for rock, for loud, overdriven, distorted music. But all I want to play these days is quiet, soft, finger-style guitar, which this P90 uh, sounds really good with. So. Gibson Faded SG Special, Seymour Duncan P90. That's the first big component of the tone. These, actually here, I'll give, you the biggest, I'll give you the biggest piece of the entire thing right now. The best thing that you could do right now, if you wanted to play more like me, was start finger picking. This is, this is the biggest, most important factor of all of the pieces. Finger style, playing guitar with the fingers. You 100% absolutely cannot get the sound that I get with a pick can't happen. You gotta throw that pick away, you gotta play with your fingers. That's the best, the biggest favor you could do yourself. I'm not trying to say that playing with a pick is bad. There's tons of reasons why using a pick is great. I'm just saying, if you want to get the tone that I get, this soft, quiet, you know, uh, gentle guitar sound, playing with your fingers is one of the biggest parts of the entire thing. I know that's not a great, that's not like a piece of gear you can go buy, but this is a skill that you can learn, finger style guitar, and this will help you play with a gentle, soft touch to get this quiet, this quiet sound. Okay, let's talk about gear. Another really big part of my clean sound is how I record, and that is with this guy. This is an audio interface. This is an audio box USB made by Presonus. This is actually a really affordable, and this was like a hundred bucks. Got it years ago, and it came with some recording software, which was the software I got started on. So this is, a, this is a great deal. Now basically, up until the point that I got this guitar amp, all I did was I plugged my guitar straight into the interface. Guitar, I would go into the looper, and then I would go into the interface, and that's it. I would, everything else was in the DAW. So this is a huge part about it. Recording DI has a way different sound than recording with a guitar amp. but. I do use a guitar amp now. A couple months ago I got this. This is a Laney L5 Studio. But I'm not actually using this to make there's uh, to make noise. This is this is silent. It's just an amp head. There's no speakers or cabinet that this is running. 
what I have is an XLR cable running out the back of this, and I plug that into the audio interface. So even though I'm using a guitar amp now, I still actually only record direct in with an audio interface. So those are the two pieces of gear that I use, an audio interface and this amp. Oh, I have a looper too. This is the only actual pedal that I use. It's a TC Electronic Ditto X2. It's a great pedal, but it doesn't really change the sound at all. It really just allows me to stack and layer guitar parts. So basically, the only pieces of gear that I use that heavily influence my sound are the audio interface and this guitar amp, the L5 Studio. Okay, everything else is on the computer end. It's inside the computer. They are digital effects in the DAW. So I use live and I only use stock effects. I don't use any fancy plugins that are real expensive or any of that. I use the effects that came with the DAW and my entire effect rack consists of three effects. I use compression, saturation, and reverb. Compression is like a dynamic range altering tool. It basically takes the really loud bits and it makes them quieter and it takes the quiet bits and makes them louder so you get a more uniform signal it reduces dynamic range. Saturation is like, uh, it emulates what overdriving or blowing out old tape equipment used to do. You get this really nice, it's, it's basically a boost. It's, an, it's a really soft, gentle overdrive that adds a bunch of sort of harmonic content to the sound that wasn't there before. Reverb is like space. It adds ambience, it makes it feel like you're in a big room. I use it on basically everything. Um, yeah, that is it. Those are the three effects that I use. Compression, saturation, reverb. Now any DAW, all of them, every single DAW comes with these effects with the possible exception of saturation. Maybe every single DAW won't come with saturation but they will sure as heck come with compression and reverb which are really the two biggest components of, the t of my tone. I compress my signal, to I, I compress it heavily, heavily, heavily compress it and I use a bunch of reverb. So that is it. That's every single piece of my tone. If you are dead set on trying to recreate it, here is my advice. Get a single coil pickup, play with your fingers, record direct in, either using an amp or just plugging your guitar straight into the interface. Before I got this amp, that's what I did. Literally, I went from guitar to looper to interface. Everything else was in the computer. So. Record DI with or without an amp, and then use compression, saturation, and reverb. And dial them in kind of lightly, with the exception of compression. I compress heavily. I heavily compress the sound. But reverb and saturation are just kind of sprinkled in there, just to give it a little bit of, a little bit of more, more tone. But basically, you can create this sound if you follow those steps. Single coil, finger pick, DI, compression, saturation, reverb. That's it. That's it. There's nothing crazy. There's no fancy, super expensive plugins. There's no crazy pedals. It's just three software effects and recording DI. That's basically it. I hope you got a lot from this. Ask any questions in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you and I will catch you next time. Peace.